What are you looking at that for, you goof? The cool stuff is over here. When you go to the beach, do you ever just look at the sand? At Rodeo Beach in the Marin Headlands, the sand, or in this case pebbles, tell a story of the past 200 million years involving volcanoes, plate tectonics, and the formation of coastal California. There are three main rock types in the Marin Headlands, basalt, chert, and gray wacky. Let's return to the pebbles. These dark colored ones with little crystals that we can make out are fragments of basalt. You don't have to go too far to find basalt at Rodeo Beach. There's a nice exposure at its south side. Basalt is an igneous rock that forms from the cooling of liquid lava into solid rock, so we know that this came from a volcanic eruption. But its shape tells us more about where it was created. Much of the basalt at Rodeo Beach is pillow basalt, and you can tell that they kind of look like pillows, you know, they're big and fluffy looking. Not very comfy though. Pillow basalts form underwater. As lava emerges from an underwater volcano, the surface of the lava hardens quickly when it gets in contact with the cold water. The inside remains hot and sort of inflates the cooled exterior until an opening emerges and a new pillow begins to form. They also can tell us which way was up when they were deposited. And by the way, there's another excellent YouTube video about this at Marin Headlands, which I have the link to in the description. The bulbous parts of pillows form upwards into the ocean where there's nothing to constrain their growth and they can kind of grow into almost like a mushroom shape. Whereas their bottom uh, hits basically what was the seafloor and uh, it has a much more limited growth. It can't have that nice rounded appearance. So when we find these pillow basalts, we can use their orientation to figure out which direction would have been up during the Jurassic. So we have the bulbous part up, which meant this way would have been the sky uh, beneath many thousands of feet of uh, seawater, and right here would have been the bottom of the ocean. The area between the pillows is filled by this kind of greenish rock, and that's still basalt, but it has been called greenstone. And the reason why is that green color is because this was the area between the pillows that would have been basically a mixture of seawater and lava that was kind of coursing its way through this, uh, this crisscross appearance between the pillows. And that seawater gave the lava um, some new minerals to work with and it gave it this kind of green texture and this green tone uh, with time. There's a couple other cool things to mention about the basalt at Rodeo Beach. One is that some of the pebbles here are carnelians, an orange-red semi-precious stone. They formed when minerals filled bubbles or vesicles and the basalt at Rodeo Beach. Just a reminder that it is illegal to take anything from Marin Headlands because it is part of the National Park Service. Additionally, it's just kind of not cool to do because it robs the land of its beauty. Apparently there used to be many more carnelians at the beach, but after years of people pocketing them, they're increasingly hard to find. I'm just gonna throw this out there since igneous rocks aren't really my specialty, but I think the bubble-like appearance on some of the basalt outcrops are spherulites, which form on the inside of pillows as they cool. Let me know in the comments if you think they're something else, but regardless of origin, they look pretty cool. The next rock to consider is chert. Chert is the most common rock in the Marin Headlands, and it gives the hills their bright red color. It also forms the majority of pebbles at Rodeo Beach. Although red is the dominant color, you can also find chert with a beautiful bluish green hue. Like the pillow basalts, chert is another rock that formed in water and we can tell because it's made up of millions of marine microorganisms, in this case radiolarians. Radiolarians are marine zooplankton that float around the ocean looking for stuff to eat. Unlike most shells that are made of carbonate, the bodies of radiolarians are made up of silica, which is the same mineralogical stuff as quartz. When radiolaria die, their bodies fall to the bottom of the ocean, and in the deep ocean where there's not a lot of suspended sediment, the bottom of the sea becomes basically just a graveyard for these guys. And with enough time, all their little bodies compress together and form a rock that we call chert. The silica from radiolarians makes chert hard and resistant to erosion, so that it can form steep cliffs and peaks in the Marin headlands. The last rock to consider here is gray wacky. Greywacky is a sedimentary rock that contains both sands and clays. This unusual combination of large and small material is explained by turbidites, which are basically underwater landslides that occur where the seafloor is sloped, like on the edges of continental shelves. Throughout the marine headlands, you consistently find the same sequence of basalt, chert, and greywacky stacked on top of each other, which then repeats. 
This repetition of blocks of related rock, called the Marin Headlands Terrain, tells us a 200 million year long story that explains the shape of western North America, including the headlands here in Marin. The basalt we discussed earlier formed during the Jurassic period, over 150 million years ago. Welcome to Jurassic Rock. We know it formed at a volcano at the bottom of the ocean, and there are two places that that can occur. At hot spots like the Hawaiian Islands, or at spreading centers like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Due to the wide lateral nature of basalts in the headlands, we can conclude that they came from a mid-ocean ridge. So what we're seeing here is the result of the first stage of plate tectonics, when new earth is created at spreading centers. Spreading centers occur along divergent plate boundaries, where tectonic plates move away from each other as hot magma rises up from the mantle, pushing the plates apart. The magma fills the void between the plates when it cools and forms basalt like what we have at Rodeo Beach. This creates a conveyor belt phenomenon where new basalt pushes old basalt further away from the spreading center. So these rocks formed hundreds of miles away from here and were slowly pushed across the ocean away from the spreading center. As the basalt made its slow journey across the Pacific seafloor, radiolarians accumulated on top of the basalt, creating the chert we see in Marin. The radiolarians date from the Jurassic to the Cretaceous, so it took millions of years for the basalt to cross the seafloor and reach North America, all the while with radiolarians being deposited. Each layer of chert in the headlands represents thousands of years of slow accumulation, perhaps 10,000 years per inch. Additionally, the radiolarians are tropical species, so the rocks must have originated from pretty far southwest of here, closer to the equator. As it approached the continental shelf of North America, turbidites of sand and clay accumulated on top of the chert, forming Marin's Grey Wacky. So the sequence of rocks in the Marin headlands represents a multi-million year journey across the Pacific to California. But the rocks in the Marin headlands don't occur in nice broad layers. Instead, they're broken up into thin segments of basalt, chert, and Grey Wacky stacked on top of each other, which repeats about 10 times throughout the headlands. We can see in this image where basalt has been thrust up on top of chert, which should be stratigraphically below it. So what explains why the rock here is broken up and stacked on top of each other? As the seafloor that contained the rocks that would end up forming the Marin headlands were pushed into North America, they began to be subducted under the North American plate, meaning that they would be driven down into the hot mantle where temperatures would get so hot that they would melt and return to the magma from which they came. But the rocks in Marin were spared of this fate by becoming part of an accretionary wedge, which means a bulge of marine rock that gets stuck to continental crust during subduction. As the rocks that make the Marin headlands got trapped in the accretionary wedge, it created a sort of rock car accident, where layers pushed into each other until they deformed or broke, creating tight chevron folds in the chert and mini thrust faults in more brittle basalt rock. So the marine headlands tell us a lot about plate tectonics, about where rocks are formed in spreading centers, and also where they're destroyed in subduction zones. Essentially, the circle of rocks. The circle of rocks Not very comfy though.